Hi everyone, I'm Edita Sitar from Laundry Basket Quilts. Welcome to Quilting Corner Live. It is a wonderful Wednesday and I wanted to wish all of you guys happy Valentine's Day. I love you so much and I am so thankful that you decide to spend your afternoon with me sewing, talking about fabric, threads and fun things from Laundry Basket Quilts. So thank you so much and I'm so happy you are here. Today is a super exciting show. I wanted to choose something that I think you would like and I love it so much. I love chocolate, I love flowers, but even more, I love fabric. And there's nothing better than share your fabrics with your friends. And a few years ago, in 2010, I had a book called Friendship Strips and Scraps. And I chose a blog and a quilt from this book to share with you today during our live show, just to show you how I make the block for a cute loose pull. Oh, it is so exciting. You can gather fabric, you can swap them with your friends. Uh, by exa uh, for example, a few years ago, I took a yard of fabric, cut up to one inch strips, and went and exchanged with a group of my friends, and I end up with a beautiful bundle of one inch strips. And that's what we're gonna be using for the base of the spa. I'm so, so excited for you guys. So today live show, we're gonna make a spool block. We're gonna talk about our birthday block of uh, the week. Uh, we had a regular block and guess what? I treat you for a nice gift today and you receive a cute little bonus block. I wanted to show you that. And then we're just gonna answer questions and talk a little bit about our common bride and prepping the fabrics because guess what? Next week, you guys are going to start with me our brand new quilt along called Common Bright Quilt Along. And I am so happy for you guys. So let's talk about the fabric, prepping the fabric. And speaking of fabric, if some of you have not yet received your kit, please, please be patient. We are moving as fast as we can. I know the girls. Um, we're here on Saturday and Sunday. I was here on Saturday filling and packing orders. We are all hands on board because we just moved. We moved from our old office to a new office. It was a big move. It, moving a business is beyond anything that I've ever done it. And I have to tell you, we are all in a new space, but it's taking us a little bit time unpacking, but I know that all the orders are being one after the other, pack and ship, pack and ship. And girls come in on Saturday, I was here, we were packing orders, we were having so much fun, and it was so exciting to see what are you guys ordering for me? Because I usually don't go and pack the orders. I'm busy with getting your new ideas, your videos, Videos. And on Saturday, I got a chance to pack some of your orders and put a little love, little swipe on your fabric and get super excited for you. But please be patient. If you have not received your package yet, we are working on it. And just so you know, when the quilt alone start, the videos are gonna be there for as long as you want them there. The blog's gonna be there. You're not gonna miss on anything. I checked everything, it's looking so nice and we finished taping uh, the videos. I'm so excited for you guys. So, so, so excited for you. So let's talk first about our birthday block. Just to review, we had so many cute six inch blocks that you have made. You have the regular pieced blocks. We had it previously one of the bonus blocks that it's an applique block. Look at all the cuties that I have made. I have few to catch up on. And now uh, this week, those are the ones that I still have to make. We have this block that came out on uh, Tuesday. And today I surprise you with a bonus block where is four little squares, three and a half inch cut, three inch finish, sewn together to a four patch and then applique four hearts on it. For me, the four hearts are so cute because they create such a lovely design and they come from a stencil 
um, that we have it on our website called Little Hard, and you can go ahead to our website. We have that stencil. You can also download that pattern through our PDF, through our blog. So go ahead and do that. And what I love about those hearts, I, when I look at it, I have one for Michael, one for Anna, one for Delvina, and one for little Michael. Those are my four people that I wanted to have in my birthday quilts. I'm maybe going to have to do multiple of those blogs blocks because as I was making this one I thought oh no I need a heart for my mother-in-law my sister-in-law my brother and it starts just rolling out and maybe there's more hearts in this quilt that I ever expected because I'm gonna also have to have some for my friends but maybe I'm gonna use some of those hearts in the border <clears throat> Oh, and I'm not going to tell you today. It's going to be a surprise. So keep making your blocks. Use your bonus heart to make it as beautiful as you want it. I also thought this heart is perfect if you want to add a little stem to leaves and have just a little like a flower heart, you know, if you just want it one. So you can go ahead and do that too, because with this bonus block, you have received all those pretty leaves and branches that could very nicely work with the heart. So it's up to you. Get creative, keep posting pictures, because guess what? Every single week I go on Instagram and look at the pictures and it makes my day. It's like a gift to me to see that you are guys making your blogs and doing such a wonderful, wonderful job. So thank you for doing that. I absolutely love it. Now let's talk about a few other things that we have to have hearts in, and then we're going to move on to our spool block. I know you're excited about that spool block. Mm -hmm. I'm excited about it too. I'm actually thinking I have two quilts. I have this one as well as the one from our friendship strips and scraps. Let's find that one in a book, but I'm thinking I'm maybe going to need a one more. I really love the spool block. And the spool is also in our block of the month. So if you didn't sign up, yes, you can still sign up for our block of the month called Sewing Basket. That's the newest collection of fabric that we're getting, Sewing Basket. And we have a block of the month that calls Sewing Basket. And it's a beautiful album uh, um, medallion quilt. So the spool quilt and the original spools are in this quilt right here. No, it's not an antique quilt. It's one that I designed. It's so lovely and I add an applique around the borders. It's really, really charming. The appliques are right here. The quilt looks just beautiful. So that was the original one I did. And now I, later on, I did one with linen texture and now I'm thinking, hmm, I need another one. And I'm got gathering some strips and scraps and some leftovers and you know what I'm gonna save this book somebody's gonna win a book today would you like that so stay tuned and let's work through your block and then let's see if um, you wanna win a book so um, I thought to myself exchanging some strips would be so much fun before I go and do that and show you some of the strips exchange, I want to show you two more uh, things that I pulled it out. One of them is our hearts content. It's a larger heart. It fits perfectly on a charm pack. It's for this lovely pattern, the quilt that is right next to me. It's getting so much love on Instagram because I post pictures with this quilt when I was in Paris with my daughter, Anna for Christian Dior and Louis Vuitton show. And guess what? Maybe in another week or two, I'm gonna be back there helping my daughter Anna, never know. And that quilt is just so nice. And yesterday I got a picture from one of our customers and a cute little girl was laying on that quilt, just enjoying rolling herself in all those hearts and all that love. I loved it. I thought it was just so beautiful. We do have pre-cut hearts. Those hearts include quarter inch seam allowance for any of our customers that love hand applique or machine applique and want to 
roll the edges around. I made my hearts using the fusible applique technique, tracing to fusible webbing, cutting exactly on a line after I pressed it into the fabric and then fusing it to the background and using beautiful zigzag stitch. And I like to use the invisible threads when I do that on nylon invisible thread. Lately, I have been using MOA of the invisible threads from wonderful those are so nice but if you wanted to nylon invisible threads are nice too so that is what i would use for your uh, smaller hard the one with the birthday if you want to we have the coco blue fabric uh, threads and also for anybody that don't know we are doing a um, quilt that it's gonna be uh, uh, happening all this year. We're making uh, 55 birthday blocks this year, every week, a block a week for my birthday quilt. And there is a surprise in the end, all the multiple layouts that I'm getting ready for you during the year, you're getting bonus blocks. So we having so much fun with that. So that is ongoing project that we're gonna be posting every Tuesday. If you have missed it, do not worry. Everything is waiting for you. It's free to anybody who wants to do it. I'm making it from blue and white fabric from the Coco Blue collection, but you can use any of your fabrics. There's so many girls that are using all different variety of fabrics and all the blocks looks just fabulous. But for my blocks, since I'm using the Coco Blue, I would have used the Coco Blue threads to stitch around the edges to give an extra little something to it. And I still have to do those stitches around this beautiful block. So maybe both the hearts, once I cut them out today, and this one are going to be my next one to do it. So many fun things. So if you wanted to go to our website, if you don't have time for a big projects, I just want to remind you, you will fall in love with our pre-cut kits. And yes, we do have a package from Quilters Dozen that have a six inch hearts in it. There are 12 blocks in this package. Pattern is included. It's inside the package and show you how to make the blocks plus sew them into a table runner. So you can do that or you can collect the blocks and set them with the sashing borders and uh, setting triangles. I had a beautiful blog on our website that gives you more details about that. So that is a, another fun project that you could do it really, really quickly. Oh, if you are shopping last minute, you can say, hey, I didn't get you flower, but guess what? Your hearts are coming and you can order those on our website. But today, if you are sitting by yourself and thinking of doing something fun, think of me, okay? Grab some strips. And what I did is I took those one inch strips. Some of them are from my fabric. Some of them came from an exchange. And all that I did is lay my strips together to create a panel. I sew them with a quarter inch seam allowance. I have the leftover of that panel right here. Look at this. So all that I did is sew my strips together. I pushed my seam allowance in a one direction and pressed it beautifully. Then I went ahead and cut up a sections out of uh, this panel. It was so easy. If my panel was a little bit too big, I first cut it this way and then trimmed the top and the bottom. This is how I achieved to get the bodies of the spool. This is the part right here. Look at how cute it looks in all those scrap, uh, scraps. Oh, this is perfect pattern to reuse it. We should have a quilt alone on a spool right after we finish our common bride. Please email me or text me or uh, tag me on your, when I post a video today, because I'm gonna post a video with this quilt uh, and I'm gonna ask you guys if you want a quilt alone. I think we should do it. We should do it. You guys should exchange fabric with each other and we all should make a bunch of beautiful spools and then come up with fun layouts for all the spools. I think it's time to do it. So what you're going to do is sew them together, cut the unit for the center of your, uh, the body of your spool. Now we're gonna need sides. So on a left and a right side, all that I'm gonna do is sew two rectangles on each side. 
one on this side just place it right sides together stitch it flip it open seam allowance will be pushed towards the light so make sure when you're choosing your light that it's a nice a good quality with a maybe a little bit of a design so no color peeks through the back so that way you don't see it if that is happening make sure you open those seams okay so that way you don't have a dark peeking through your background once you sew the sides the left and the right let me show you it's gonna look just like this and i want to step back just for the moment a you can exchange strips or you could exchange bodies of spools because out of one panel you get bunch of the same one but you can go ahead and tell your girlfriend hey i give you one if you give me one of yours and then you get all different colors so you can exchange either strips or you can exchange bodies of the spool so just think about it what a fun idea to do that because it will give you something fun and exciting so but back to the assembly we have now sewn left and the right i push the seam allowance as i told you towards the light and now i need the top and the bottom of my spool so i'm gonna take a brown rectangle just like this i'm gonna put a square in each corner just this way okay the next step i'm gonna draw a line and draw a line and i'm gonna do that twice exact the same draw a line and draw a line okay i'm gonna now stitch on the lines okay pay attention always start up from here to the point don't start up on a point because you're going to push that point into your bobbin and make a little mess and we don't want that we want it to be really nice so start up right here so and you can do chainsaw you can prep a bunch of tops and the bottoms just do a lot of chainsawing for now i'm just showing you one because we're making one spool as soon as you finish stitching all that you're gonna do is you going to trim this part right here so i'm gonna take um, scissors i'm gonna cut this i don't need that extra i'm gonna push my seam allowance towards my spool and please listen to it you want to push it towards the spool here you push towards the light here you want it in the opposite direction towards the spool and you're going to trim it on each side and do that and this is gonna be the bottom part and now you're gonna do the same thing look i already trimmed it for the top part now just notice those are exactly the same do you see all that I did is just rotate to have the top and have the bottom. Now, when you put this next to your spool, your first thing you're gonna wanna do is call me because you're gonna say, oh, this doesn't match. Please do not do that. Just take your time. It's not supposed to match here. You need to match here with a quarter inch seam. So a little bit higher with a quarter inch seam. This is what you're gonna match. So because it's on an angle, we're not gonna lock the seam. It's gonna be on an angle. So it's gonna come in a little bit to the inside, but do not fear. We're gonna place this down, right sides together. I'm not worried about the left and the right sides, but I want a beautiful match right here. And this is what I'm going to estimate. You can measure quarter inch from here to here. You can go ahead, push your pin. If it's exactly on the thread right there, okay? Jo oh, it's still not there. So I have to pay attention right there. Oh, now it's nice. If it's exactly on the thread, that means that everything is going to work nice. I'm just going to pin it. I'm going to pin it right here and you could feel it. You can feel where this is folded. You can see it. This is where I need to have my pin right there. Pin it down right there because I want to make sure that when I stitch and then open it out, open it up, I have a beautiful transition that everything matches so, so nice. 
if it does not match first time don't be upset with yourself keep trying because guess what to do something that looks nice it just takes time and a little practice so today guess what you're gonna give yourself a little love and said i'm good enough i'm perfect as i'm making those things i'm doing a nice job i'm enjoying it i'm being nice to myself and i'm gonna give myself a little grace and a little time to learn to match it up really nice i'm not gonna set up too high of a marks for myself i'm gonna take time and learn even if i have to make a mistake and learn from my mistake so that is what we're going to do today and once you do that you sew then you're gonna go ahead at the bottom part again match it up really nice remember and go straight it has to match quarter inch away quarter inch away you're gonna pin it you're gonna sew it you're gonna flip it and you're gonna have a, a beautiful beautiful block that you're gonna be super proud of it and enjoy it so that is for my little spool um block i hope you like that now for all my girls that are part of our fabric club guys this is the perfect time to cut one strip from every fabric that you have got it from your fabric club and start putting them into your laundry basket spools because guess what you have collected all these beautiful fabrics and you have gorgeous lights and speaking of lights you can use all different lights for every spool then use this as the same fabric it's up to you you do not have to have all the same fabrics you could do it more scrappy you could uh, go a little bit more organized the one advice that I would give it to you is do some spools where all the colors uh, the colors are matching fabrics are different so I have green spool orange spool blue spools but then do some spools let me see if I have one by me oh look at this mix and match of blues and greens so do some that are mix and match but also do some that are very organized and if you want it a little bit different in your spools if you don't have anyone to exchange with you can go ahead and make your strips shorter so you don't have as much of the same or simply turn it over look already looks a little bit different so you can do that as well and yes the third chance that you can exchange you can finish your spool blocks and then swap them with your friends but i know you are super excited about it and once you make your blocks you're not gonna want to give it to anyone you want to keep it for yourself and your beautiful quilt so you can enjoy it and even if you make five of the spools uh, just like this and make a tiny little wall hanging and just maybe add a little applique maybe those birthday shapes including that heart could be a fun thing oh start getting creative i tell you what i know that one of the blocks that we are going to be doing in our birthday uh, quilt also is going to be a spool but i'm not gonna spoil it right now if it's this one or maybe a different design of a spool I don't know Michael is smiling because he knows me if it comes to quilting I can't have a birthday quilt without a spool a house and other cute little surprises now do you guys have any questions for me yes we do yes and I want to bring in front of me this gorgeous collection called sewing basket and the variegated threads are available through our friendship strips and scraps book this book includes the quilt with applique but we also have the plain option just variegated thread and this one um, doesn't have the applique on it it's for more my beginners and more my modern quilters in a book we call the quilt friendship spools and that one has the appliques all the way around and today we're going to use this book as uh, one of our door prizes and i'm super excited so what is the question for the day today so our first question comes from Frances, and she was wondering, does using Best Press help prevent or reduce the fabric edges from um, unraveling? 
Yes, I love that question and I have a little surprise for you guys in a few weeks. We're going to announce we have something wonderful coming out, a brand new spray for fabric finish so that way it helps you with the fraying and all this other stuff so i'm super excited about it but for now if you wanted to and this is what i want to talk to you about common bride if you're getting ready for next week it is so important that you take your fabric kit so common bride is this pattern right here this is the quilt that we're going to be doing next eight weeks together we're starting in the center we're going to make a simple eight point star we're going to add four patches we're going to add a feather star we're going to add an applique we're going to sew it of eight point star borders add another border with those beautiful flowers four patches uh, right here for the outside border setting i'm telling you it is going to be epic it's one of my best quilts original design it's not based on an antique quilt i'm super proud of it and so excited for you guys but if you already have your own fabrics or you're getting our kit make sure you open the kit spray your fabric with best press starch fabric finish from the back don't spray it on the front i'm not a big fan to do that spray it from the back let it soak in okay don't rush right away and put an iron on it let it soak in a little bit and then go ahead and press and have your fabric ready so you can cut your strips and get right into those 400 diamonds that are one of our first steps michael was like what he's so excited about the 400 diamonds don't worry we are only doing eight diamonds at a time one start at a time you do not have to cut all at once and we just chip at it chip at it and keep making it keep building it you're gonna have a lovely quilt i know there's a lot of customers that are so excited about this project so best press would be wonderful to prepare your fabric uh, in this bag, this is also part of this kit, you have all your lights. I would also recommend you prep them. The, this part, you're not going to need to second week, third and a fourth week. And there's also background and those three pieces are extra for branches in, in case you don't have enough. And um, I would love you to please remember this is a perfect project to add some of your own scraps but also be nice and frugal keep all your leftover scraps because we're going to reuse all those for our appliques and it's very important that you have all the different colors to give a really fun scrappy feel to the quilt so that is for that one thank you for that question Erin now can I um ask you guys a question yes so the question of the day and you have just a few minutes to answer this is not the one because we're gonna have one more question and that one you have a uh until next uh um quilting corner to answer for everybody that is, cannot watch us live we do now uh, at least two questions so my first question for you guys what was the name of the people for the four hearts on my birthday block? Okay. I showed you my birthday block. There were four hearts and I pointed to every heart and told you the names for the four people. So let's see if you remember the names. And it's super simple. Uh, just a little help, you know. There are four names. So... I'm not going to help you. Erin say no help. <laughs> no help. Uh, speaking of helping, as I was making the step-by-step -step for Common Bride, and I'm making the quilt all over again. I have mine that I made it a few years ago, but I'm making a second one. I know my daughter Anna is super excited about that. I'm probably going to gift her with it, but I noticed i use so much my clappers because some of the eight point star were giving me a little hard time only the first one and the second one after that i was back at it you know so give yourself some time if your first star doesn't come out perfect it's only because you are starting over again making the eight point stars or you are brand new in it but those clappers were so good you iron your blocks you leave it on your iron 
ironing uh, board, your um, wool ironing board, and you put your clapper down and it holds it down nicely. And that way it's nice and smooth and doesn't buckle up for you. So uh, do we have answers? Uh, for, yes, uh, we do. We and, do. And we Guys, have a winner. You are so good. You're paying attention so good. And somebody's going to get a gift from me. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to slip in, in this book, sign the book to you on Valentine's and slip in one of those hearts so you can use it as a bookmarker or maybe to make a bunch of hearts. And speaking of bunch of hearts, I was looking at this heart and immediately my eye went straight into those pinks and just gorgeous uh, cocos that I have collected, like super soft and beautiful. And you know, we have just moved. So I'm unpacking, putting my fabrics away. <gasps> Can you imagine gorgeous, beautiful big quilt or just maybe medium size, a little girl's quilt with just this side, little hearts. Mm, so excited about it and I'm hoping that you're gonna use hand applique or machine applique for that one just to practice to see if it's gonna work for you but if not you can use the fusible applique it's up to you but just remember in one quilt you can have variety of techniques nobody said there is no quilt police that said you cannot in one quilt machine piece hand piece I'll do fusible applique, hand applique, machine applique, English paper piecing. And I'm already doing this with you. I'm going to be throwing some blocks that have variety of techniques from paper piecing to English paper piecing to applique. So since I did my first applique was fusible, I thought maybe the hearts could be a nice one to do hand applique because your birthday quilt with me will be a gift that it will keep on giving you're going to be learning all different techniques and then you can look at, it at your quilt and say oh, look at i used 10 different techniques to make this quilt and you know what that is the gift you learning something new and challenging yourself that is the biggest thing okay so who answer correctly i love it so um our winner for this question uh their youtube name is sam with cooper Sam, congratulations. And the answers was Michael, Anna, Delphina, and Michael. Yes, you are correct. Those are the four people that I name my hearts after and they're going into my blog. So I'm super excited. I hope your quilts are full of hearts, guys. And I hope you're having a wonderful day. Do we have any other questions for today? We do. We have a couple we... of questions okay. about our birthday quilt. Um, the first question comes from Laura and she said, um, those flying geese on the birthday block, um, gave me some trouble. Do you have any tips on getting a perfect block? So when I do flying geese, I love to use block lock rulers and I invest in just about every size. I have them next to me. I make my flying geese. And one thing I notice. I push my seam allowance one way and on a second triangle, I push it in the opposite way. So that works the best for me. See if that could help you. And then I put my block lock and trim it. But I know it's so hard because in a flying geese, you have a quarter square triangle and then you have half square triangle. And what about we do this next uh, quilting corner? Let's just make simple flying geese unit and as I'm making it you guys can ask questions let's look at it let's try different things and see what works for you is that a deal I love that let's do it so next quilting corner we're gonna uh, do some flying geese in all different sizes and I'm gonna show you all different tricks and tips what I like to do if I open the seams if I push it in opposite why am I doing this and how I lock it with my uh, a block lock rollers. I love that. I think that's going to be a great show. Yes, I'm excited about it too. Yes. Um, okay, we did have another question. This one's about applique. Maybe they'll be joining us for Common Bride. Yes. Um, Hun Polka said, Edita, I have a question regarding the applique quilts. Do you quilt over the applique or just around? Depends on a quilt. So sometimes if I want to emphasize the applique, I stitch in a ditch right close to the edges to push the applique up a little bit and give a little like a 
fluff to it okay but sometimes if i don't mind to melt all together with all the pieced blocks i just do edge to edge and stitch it right over so you can go either way i really love to play with my quilts and i think that's why my journey in quilting have been so fulfilling for me because i didn't set rules and boundaries and maybe because as a beginner quilter i didn't know you know and all that I did is just enjoy myself and make beautiful things that make me happy and filled my quilting garden with beautiful patches and don't put any fences and boundaries on my creativity. And I wish this for you guys. Don't go by rules. Do what you like to do. And I think in the end, this is going to be more fulfilling for you and don't like... Um, put you into the corner that oh I can't do this because I can't mix hand with fusible guess what there is no rule if you see a rule someplace out there I need you to email me because I would love to hear about it if there is a rule that you cannot put multiple techniques in one quilt it is your quilt do what you want it and enjoy your journey you only have one quilting life to enjoy it so take advantage of it i love that and we have one last question for today and it's from donna and she's part of our little quilts club and she was wondering do you recommend and she's doing uh february's right now it sounds like yes. she was saying do you recommend cutting the background squares for the heart block slightly larger for hand applique and then trim to size after you're i done? love that especially that sometimes when you do uh, do applique by hand the pieces fray always cutting a little bit bigger background is a good idea i love that comment and you know what i'm gonna make sure that we let other customers know too that they can do it i usually remind it in a pattern if you're doing hand applique cut a little bit bigger because also when you're stitching with the hand applique not everybody but sometimes we have tendency to pull a little bit tight and then we bring that back uh, uh, backing a little bit closer down so getting yourself a little bit of a room and also for holding the block and did you notice in my blog i ask you to piece the backgrounds together then applicate the hearts because sometimes when it's too small of a project it's hard to hold it in your hand so i hope you enjoyed it i hope you had a wonderful show with us if you love the show make sure number one give me a gift for valentine's share the show with your friends okay then give us thumbs up leave us comments and now i have one more question for you and this question you can answer and somebody second person is gonna be able to win also this beautiful book friendship um friendship strips and scraps and yes i would also include that my heart in it for that cute little heart so my question for you guys is how many strips are in the bodies of the spool? How many strips are in the bodies of the spool? So you have time, you can visit our website, you can research, you can figure it out. How many strips are in the body of the spool that we learned today how to make? I hope you had a wonderful show. I wish you great Valentine's Day. Do something nice for your loved ones, but also remember yourself, fill your heart with low scraps and enjoy making them with your friends or enjoy just you doing something that you love, a little stitching and a little time of quiet. And I wish you happy quilting. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs>